Hi and welcome to WEH Videos. My name is Skip and this is part 5, my last in a series on building your own control panel or instrument panel for X-Plane. And so we're going to take a closer look at this panel and I'll show you some of the little problems that I ran into. But all in all, everything works pretty much as I planned with just a few exceptions. So let's take a closer look. All right, so here's a closer look at the panel. And all in all, I have over 70 combinations that I was able to use. I want you to know right up front that I came up short. I have a couple of buttons that I cannot use. And I'll explain that later. But I just wanted to give you a little demonstration right now. So I've blown up my Panner Builder program so you can see this. Now I do have some work left to do here on the panel. I need to outline what the components are and do some labeling so there's a lot of cosmetics that aren't done yet so that will change however these little groupings right here these five buttons these five these five and these five are COM1 NAV1 COM2 and NAV2 and up here I have COM1 so in COM1 as you see when I push this up the lower decimal number raises and it lowers and the higher number raises and lowers and then is my little flip-flop button so that's COM1 and NAV1 well let's just take a look at NAV1 the numbers go up and down up and down and we had the flip-flop so that's all working pretty nice down here I have the transponder and this turns it off and on and then I can raise and lower the numbers with the transponder and so I just wanted to show that pretty much everything works these switches here are all the lights and over on the other side I have some other components you don't need to see I just wanted to show you that pretty much everything is working as expected this button won't work and I'm out of combinations so I don't know what to do about that I guess I just tried to uh, get too much done here. I will do some research on uh, finding out how to program a control function in here so I could double up on all of these. So if I want to make a larger panel, I can do that. So now I want to show you some of the construction problems that I ran into and give you some tips and hopefully you will avoid the mistakes I made in this. So let's take a look at the back of my panel it's all wired up and as you can see I've tried to keep the wires at 90 degree angles as much as possible still it's pretty sloppy but it works just fine and I want to go over the things that went wrong first off I found that three wire combinations that showed up in X-Plane would not work when I tried to assign a function and that is the NumPad minus key will not produce anything in X-Plane even though it shows up. And key number five, I don't know what key that is, uh, it showed up. But that turned the sound on and off when I actuated it. And even though I could assign it to something every time I would flip the switch, the sound would go off. So I couldn't use that. And the last one is a character and I don't even know what character it is but in that little green box in X-Plane it's a little tiny dot or something in the very middle on the very top and that showed up and I was able to program it but then again nothing would happen when I tried it so I don't know what the story is there I was able to find two more wire combinations to change so I could take care of these two problems I had but I'm out of luck with the last one my problem was I went way too fast when I was checking the wires and I made a lot of mistakes. You look here, wire number five, I didn't think it had anything and it actually produced F4 and F2 and F3 and some other mistakes. I really did not take my time as I should have when I was checking for the wire combinations. The other thing is I missed several duplications and that ended up giving me a, a lot fewer combinations than I thought I had in the end. I thought I had about 10 extra combinations. 
But because I just kind of went too fast and didn't take my time, I came up one short. So I have one switch here, this one right here, uh, this lower lug here. It doesn't do anything, and I can't change it because anything I do here will affect that one, and I'm just out of combinations. So, take your time getting the wire combinations and quadruple check to make sure you have everything right. Now, since I had duplications, I had to do some rewiring with these three combinations. And remember when I told you this lower row here was all wire 27? Well, as you can see, they're no longer all wire 27. I had to jumper wire 18 in here. Fortunately, 18 had a couple of extras for me, so I was able to wire 18 into the middle of these two switches and use them. I still lost this fella, but that was one of the processes I did. And also, if you have to jump into a number here and it's one of your gang numbers, it's much easier to do the soldering right here on the bare wire. I did that here, and I had to do that up here, too, with another change I made. So don't try and solder it to another terminal if you don't have to. That gets a little messy, and it, uh, you end up with a lot of solder piled up on your component. With that said, design your panel after you know for sure you have enough combinations. And that way you won't be stuck like, like me with a useless switch here. And that was, you know, if I would have taken my time, I could have avoided that. So I have some tips for you that might help you avoid the problems I ran into. If you have a lot of components, the wiring can get complicated towards the end. I thought this went pretty easily as I was coming across, and it went pretty well. But towards the end, things started getting a little tight. Now, as you recall, I placed a wire number next to each component. I remember I have 14, 7, 6, and I did all that numbering with the wires I was going to gang together. Well, this turned out to be a problem in the end. When I found out I needed to rewire, I ran out of room for writing the numbers down. Look here, I had 18, 20, 19, 14 on this thing here, and it's just a, a mess. I have no idea what's there. And this made it very confusing. I found myself needing to trace the wire. So I'd have to come over here, find a wire, and see where it went, and trace it through all here, and find a component or a wire number that I needed, maybe up in here, to jump her over there. It got quite confusing. So my suggestion is take a picture of the back of your panel before you start wiring, print it out, and write a number by each component, not the wire number. So do something like this here. And so here's the, here's the back of your panel, one, two, three, four, five. Now you have a number next to each component. Then when you decide which component and wires are ganged together, you can write the number down on the piece of paper, not on the back of the circuit board. Also, when you're doing this, when you're soldering, write the small number down on the paper also. So let's say you're going to gang these components together on wire 23. Now you're going to write 23 below the 1 and below the 2 and below the 8 and 9. So you know that you're going to gang these together. Then when you get the smaller numbers, you can write the number up here. So this could be a 3 and a 5 and a 7, whatever it is. But this will be a nice record of what wires you soldered to each component. And if you do this as you go, when you run into a problem, and you most likely will, it'll be a lot easier to make wire changes. After you have everything wired, then you're happy and you're ready to start testing. It's a good idea to have a picture of the front of your panel also with all the characters for each component it produced. So here's the, my panel, and as you can see, I have the letter or number, or whatever the character was for each component. And this is a great way for double checking for duplicates. So when I found my duplicates, it was really easy just to say, okay, I knew it was right up here, this one and this one produced the same numbers, to just change one of them, and that would take care of that problem.
And then I would write those changes, of course, on my sheet here. I'd go back to my piece of paper and I would change these numbers so I would know what I had with my final product. A very good idea to have this information later on. So I guess that's it for this little tutorial on how to create your own control panel. Just some final tips. Go slowly. Get yourself good documentation. When you're done, you want to be able to know where everything is. So if something goes wrong six months or a year later, you can look at your documentation and be able to find components and stuff that you need. You don't want to be looking at this later on and just be going crazy tracing wires. The other thing is, have as many combinations left over as you can when you start. Make sure that you have a lot of extra wire combinations you can use. Don't run short. And when you're done, you can use a wire to tie wires together. Like if you look over here, I have taken this wire and I've wrapped it with another wire to keep those wires nice and clean. Oh, I almost forgot. One final thing. The one thing I didn't like about this was I could not find any other buttons other than these red ones that would work. Guess what? Nail polish works really well on these. So what I will do is I will change the colors on some of these buttons. The problem being, this stuff's not cheap. Nine dollars for a bottle of nail polish, so I'm not going to do too much changing. But if I can find somebody with some other colors, a friend at church or something, maybe that'll help. So don't be discouraged that the buttons are all red or black or whatever the buttons you get. There is hope. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of this and you're on your way to make your own panel. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.